Everybody can hear me. I promise you I won't be standing behind that. Okay, I have a very, very important talk for you today. So you are blessed to be in this room. Turn to the person next to you and say, I am blessed. <laughs> you said it to me. That's okay. Look, I, my, my story has been from pain to purpose, and, and many of you may know that story or, or not, but I'll, I will tell it throughout my lecture here. But I've been blessed to speak a lot about this topic around the world, Zimbabwe, many places around the world, here at the last uh, big conference, uh, Bulletproof Conference. So I haven't been to a chiropractic conference in a while, although this is my core right here. As a matter of fact, you'll notice I am very different than most functional medicine people, and I don't even like the term, because everything that I teach is about removing the interference. Everything that I teach is about the principle, the way I live my life. My wife and I had three biological children. Uh, we adopted two, but our three were born at home, unvaccinated. They're 20, 18, 14, and never have taken a drug in their life. We adopted two children who tragically lost their parents. Matter of fact, you'll see part of that story as well, that the boy was vaccine damaged. And when we knew them, because they were, this is my wife's cousin, they were on every drug all the time, antibiotic after antibiotic. And of course, they needed them every time. However, when we adopted them age seven, something magical happened that they never needed another drug and they're 21 today. So are we just really lucky people or do we live our life by a different philosophy? Obviously, it works. I've lived my life, all my kids were checked for subluxation the moment they came out of the womb. That is the life I live. Therefore, when I lost my life to an unexplainable illness, I anchored into that very core. For me, it is about removing the interference in the body doing the healing. Chemical subluxation, it is a generational epidemic that most people today aren't addressing correctly. In our world, in the functional medicine world, and of course in the allopathic world, they're not concerned with it. But today, this is a different animal. Chemical subluxation, if you truly, in your heart, have a desire to make a difference and to transform lives, which I know that you do, because this is a room of chiropractors, then I believe you have to address chemical subluxation today. When you put that together with physical removal of subluxation, the chiropractic adjustment, I believe that is a health center of the future, and that is the name of my seminars. And my next one is November 2nd through the 4th, by the way. This man, our founding, one of our founding fathers, talked about it. Trauma, toxins, thoughts, right? Physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. If you remove those interferences, the body has the ability to heal. You know, if I had a board, and oftentimes I do, and you can see it on a camera, I always draw the cell. And one of the things that I love to do is imagine this, because I can't draw it, and I'm a really visual person because I'm dyslexic, so I'm gonna, you're going to be dyslexic with me. Is that okay? Put up your fist. That's a cell. Are you good with that? Is it okay? Because that's all we have, folks. <laughs> well, maybe not, but we're not going there. All right, this is all we have. All right, we're going to work with this. Now imagine if we put physical, chemical, and emotional stressors above this cell. Bruce Lipton, he talked about these stressors driving the DNA in that cell. Now here's the way it works. On the cell, you have these receptors called IMDs, integral membrane IMPs, integral membrane proteins, and Bruce talks a lot about them. These stressors communicate with those receptors. And by the way, see, that's why thoughts can change cells in DNA, because they are, it's a wavelength, it's a frequency that these receptors, actually, that's how they work, through frequency. So chemicals, thoughts, traumas, all of it will change these receptors, which communicate with the DNA in the cell. And then that DNA creates a protein and that protein is your hormones. It's you. You are proteins. 
So when you change your thoughts, you change your DNA, which changes your protein and ultimately your destiny, who you are. The problem today is chemicals in subluxation also plays a role with those receptors. So the chemicals also change those receptors. As a matter of fact, if you Google the Oguti gene mouse, it's these obese mice that they create by giving them toxins. If you saw the Duke University study, basically they took two identical twin groups of mice. One group, they, and they fed them the same, same environments exactly, identical twins, same DNA. They separated the brothers and sisters into these two groups, except one group they gave a toxin. And that toxin turned on their agouti gene, which made these mice obese with thyroid conditions, hormone problems, etc. They turned it on. You know how many generations that gene stays on for? Four. The next generation, unfortunately, was born doomed with the gene turned on, and as little teenage mice, they became obese. Didn't matter what they ate. Didn't matter how much they exercised. This is what's happening today. So these stressors right there tell the cell. The cell changes the DNA, and then it changes your protein, and ultimately your destiny. This is why America is so sick. So to get well, we have to fix the cell. I put Bruce's quote in there because I figured he was speaking this morning. It would be nice. Chiropractors that may say, I don't know. I don't even know about this. What about the brain? Because the intelligence, Bruce says, is actually in the cell membrane. You have to remember the human nerve system is derived of embryonic skin, the human counterpart of the cell membrane. Therefore, the nerve system is one big cell membrane. So when I say you have to fix the cell to get well, understand that every cell, this brain and spinal cord is just a big cell membrane because this is where the intelligence is with these little integral membrane proteins that pick up the information from this outer environment, whether it's physical, chemical, or emotional, tells these little receptors, and according to Lipton, that's where the intelligence in the body lies. And then that communicates to your DNA, and it makes you for better or for worse. You are your thoughts. Biology of belief. You are the exposure of your toxic exposures, which typically happen and start in utero, and you are your amount of physical traumas as well. The best news is we know how to change it. I believe there are three main toxins affecting four generations. And this is driving most of the diseases that we see. I'm blessed to coach hundreds of doctors, my cellular detox around the country and world. And I can tell you that most of it is coming from these toxins. There's many different toxins, but it's this right here. And there's a reason for that, as you will see. If you look at the Environmental Working Group, they examined 413 toxic chemicals in cord blood in newborns. 287 of the 413 they found in the babies. And unfortunately, 180 of those chemicals are known to cause cancer. And the fact is, cancer rates have exploded since 1950, almost 70%. And we know 95% of all cancer is environment. It's environment, mostly due to chemicals. Otto Warburg, at the turn of the century, said it's these dang toxins that are screwing up the mitochondria. And he talks about that as being the big driver for cancer and other diseases. Let's start with this. Our parents and most of us grew up in the lead generation. Gasoline, paint, you name it. It was in everything, still in things. However, the problem is it affects two, four, um, four generations two different ways. Number one, physical inheritance. In, the, in utero, you inherit mom's lead. You inherit all of her toxins, but lead is a big player. You know why that is? Because it's normal during pregnancy to actually lose bone. And guess where the lead is stored? In bone. So out comes the lead during pregnancy, and it starts the whole toxicity problem from there. 
Secondly, I already told you this, epigenetics. It turns on the gene for four generations. And ironically, it was said that if we just, if we took lead out of everything today, it would still take another four generations just to breed it out. I experienced this myself. That's my wife's lead level. Now it says 69 there, but it actually was one, it actually went up to 110 as we were bringing it out of her body and then went down as we did cellular detox on her. Now my wife was going to end up just like her mom who ended up dying of cancer. It was uterine cancer, but 10 years before that, she had breast cancer and she was a success. She was treated the regular allopathic way, chemo, radiation, the whole thing, and she was a success. And I said, Joyce, if you don't get upstream to the cause of why you got the cancer, you're gonna end up with another cancer. No, the doctors said, and you've heard that line before. I said, but you have estrogen-driven cancer, and there's something driving the hormone problem, and I'm trying to back her upstream to this, and she never bought into it. She ended up 10 years later with uterine cancer, two years later died. My wife was going the same direction. She started getting certain symptoms. We ran a 24-hour urine hormone on her to find out her methylation was tanked, and she had something called 4-hydroxyestrone, very elevated. It's a toxic estrogen metabolite that would, in fact, drive breast cancer. So I gave her all these methyl groups, all the stuff, and it just wasn't working. I couldn't get her levels up. And I knew there was an upstream stressor because methylation depletes upon physical, chemical, or emotional stresses. It's an epidemic today. And the problem is methylation gets rid of toxic estrogen. So this was the issue with her mother, and she was going down the same road. And then I did her lead because her mother had high lead. So that was my wife's test that she got it from where? Her mother. That's my son, who despite being born at home, adjusted, not vaccinated, had digestive issues, constipation, diarrhea, this sensitivity, that sensitivity, all these issues, and tested him, his lead was elevated. All three of my biological children had elevated lead. Where did they get it? Mom, number one cause, it's generational. I had the opportunity to go to Flint, Michigan, and it was really kind of depressing, actually, because they brought me in to educate the doctors about the real way to get heavy metals out of the body. And fortunately, I had the opportunity to speak to the, the hospital administrators, the head of the hospitals, the doctors. They knew nothing about the topic, but the problem was, is as we got that going, blood tests started coming back because they identified it with a blood test, which only shows an acute exposure, meaning you're being exposed, because the lead or any other heavy metal won't last but a couple days in the blood, and then it goes into deeper tissue, or some of it goes out. But the point is your blood test is, ends up normal. And the tests are coming in, and it was basically like, well, we solved the problem, we don't need you. And I went back a second time to say, no, you're missing this. It's in their brain, in bone, and everywhere now. It's, that's why you're not seeing it in the blood. And it was never heard. The problem went away until violent crime rate goes up because we know mother's lead exposure affects the baby's brains. Infants who are exposed to high levels of lead are most likely to commit violent crimes later in life. You think they need that in Flint, Michigan? It's true. When you look at the lead levels in jails and mercury, it's unbelievable what it does to the brain. Some believe that it's, it depletes, uh, displaces calcium, which is needed for normal brain development. But I can tell you it's more than that. But if you just look at this correlation as gasoline came out, and as it's a perfect correlation with as lead started dropping in the environment, violent crimes actually started dropping for no other reason. It's, it's pretty darn remarkable. Lead and obesity, this result suggests that chronic lead exposure in children may result in obesity that persists into adulthood. See, it disrupts the hormones. That's the problem. So I'm gonna bring you back to the cell. 
Bring up your hands. You're going to do this with me. This is how you learn, right? If you do it, you're going to learn. Now, on that cell, make some of these integral membrane proteins. They're hormone receptors. We'll call it something more simple. These receptors, I already told you, are what communicate with your thoughts, the toxins, and your hormones in this case. So these receptors are very important for everything. It gets its message, and it changes your DNA for better or for worse. Here's the problem. Toxins make their way to this fatty membrane. So what happens is the toxins surround that membrane, and they blunt these receptors. So now these receptors aren't being heard by the hormones. It's one of the reasons, even outside is the fact that the toxins will just turn on bad genes, thyroid, diabetes, whatever it is, obesity. However, the blunting of the hormone receptors is why so many people can't lose weight today. It's why so many people, despite doing bioidentical hormones and all these things, still don't feel well. It's why people take thyroid medication is a great example. And they go to their doctor, finally their blood work shows, because they had a thyroid condition for 20 years before the blood work actually even goes off. And they say, Doc, you know, I think this is going, my hair's been falling out, da, da, da. And he says, oh, yeah, your thyroid hormone. Here, just take this. And they go home with the medication. They take it. And they say, I might feel a little better, but not really. They go back to their doctor, and he looks at their blood work and says, nope, your blood work's perfect now. He was treating the blood and not what? them, right? And he says, you're fine. The problem is he was giving them more hormone, but the hormone wasn't connecting to the receptor because the receptors are blunted because inflammation-driven toxicity. And the thyroid, although it was normal in the blood, wasn't getting its message in the cell. This is an epidemic today. I could go down the list of estrogen, testosterone, I could go all these different hormones. The problem isn't giving more hormones. The problem is getting our cells to hear the hormones. And the biggest issue is the level of toxicity, not just toxins, but these neurotoxins that I'm talking about. That's the epidemic. That's the problem. They're neurotoxins. They get in the brain. You'll see that. So lead gut. How many gut problems do we have? This study's just showing that the lead affects the gut, and that drives obesity. It's driving weight gain. But the problem is, as I can tell you, as doctors that fix very, very challenged sick cases, we can't get their gut right until we work upstream to the bigger issue. Everyone's giving bacteria and probiotics and all the functional medicine people are giving a lot of vitamins, but it's not the problem. It's chemical subluxation driven from birth. That's the issue. From pain to purpose, she opened by saying that I went from pain to purpose. So you have to understand, that was my wife. Her lead went into this one. That's my oldest, who's 20. He's 18 now, so this picture's a little, uh, couple years old. That's my beautiful wife, where the lead started. That's my dog, who had no lead, the only healthy one in the picture. And uh, actually, there's my other dog here, he blends in. These are the two twins that we, my battery's running out there, but the two twins there, the blondes, they're um, second from the right. If I give it a break, maybe the battery will kick back in. And then my youngest is on the very right. But uh, Dylan is the boy there. As you see him there, you would never know he was on the autism spectrum. When we took Dylan in, he was out to lunch. I mean, he couldn't, obviously, he was not going to school or any special, uh, he was in all special classes, et cetera. If you met Dylan today, he's absolutely, you would never know he actually was on the autism spectrum. You know, if it continues the way it is right now, do you realize by 2032, one in two kids on the autism spectrum? Do you realize how few people are getting to the, where the problem is? And that's the amount of neurotoxins that cross into the brain. That's how I got that boy well. So I got myself well, whoops, and then I drove that into my wife's case, my children, and then when we inherited the twins, you know, I always say, I like to say Dylan was my second case of neurotoxicity. Uh, but like I said, uh, amazing story. He's in San Diego now running his own business. Pretty amazing. But one in two kids by 2032, we better pay attention to chemical subluxation because that's ultimately what's going on. Yes, the gut needs fixed, but everyone's forgetting about this brain. Both of them need fixed. But you're not going to fix this without bringing the toxins out. My brain phase, 
as we call it. Trousseau detox is what I'm known for, but the brain phase in it is where the magic really is. And that is how I got my life back. That's how Dylan got his life back. And everyone in that darn picture got their lives back. So my story wasn't lead. My story was this. The second toxin that's generational is mercury. When you and your parents, or were you and your parents exposed to this? Of course you were. Dental amalgam fillings is actually the number one adult source of mercury. So if you had those when growing up, you have mercury in your brain. It's vapor that crosses the blood-brain barrier and it turns to inorganic mercury. And there is locked until you do something, use a fat-soluble chelator to get it out of your brain. I don't care if you took the fillings out. It's still locked in your brain, causing disruption, subluxation to your entire nerve system. That's getting to the cause. Vaccines, the number one child exposure, even to this day, just because of flu shots alone. And of course, seafood, as you can see, ranks way down. But what gets the biggest media attention because of environmentalists is the seafood, but nobody, because of big pharma, the dental industry is talking about the real problem, of course. And by the way, down on the right, if you wore contact lenses, as I did in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, we were putting mercury directly into our brain via our eyes with saline solution. That's now been outlawed. This study presented in FASIB, the number of fillings that you have or had in your mouth is proportional to how much you have in your brain and those organs in particular on that study, but it's mostly in the brain. And you know where in the brain? In that study and others, they find it in your pituitary hypothalamus. What does that control? Your thyroid, your adrenals, and your hormonal system. And everybody's downstream, just like I was when I was sick. And I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I was it literally in the best shape of my life, training as a cyclist at the expert level, and fatigue hits. So as a good athlete, I would say, back off. I did that. Wouldn't go away. Matter of fact, it turned into headaches. Then it went into deeper fatigue, then insomnia, then panic attacks. Then I became allergic to every food I ate. This food, is it that, is it this? My food intolerance is off the chart. Then I became chemically sensitive. My anxiety was so bad I couldn't function anymore. At that time, I was seeing between 500 and 800 chiropractic visits a week by myself. Imagine. I quickly dropped to 200. Even that, I was laying down in between patients. I would come in and look at my schedule and pray that there was no new patients. And then it got to the point where I couldn't even do that. My wife would have to leave the home if the kids were crying because I couldn't stand the noise. My adrenals were shot. I couldn't even watch a football game. It was too much. Like most people, I was trying to fix my thyroid and my adrenals. I took every adrenal product. I'm dyslexia, so I'm able to read things and remember it like nobody's business. And I couldn't figure it out. I knew that it was something upstream in my pituitary hypothalamus because I wasn't getting good information from the body. I figured it all out. I just didn't know what. And one day, I found Mad Hatter's disease. And Mad Hatter's disease, they were using mercury to attenuate viruses when they were making felt hats, et cetera. It's part of the process. And I had all the symptoms of a Mad Hatter. So I said, I'm gonna get a blood test. I did, negative. Of course, I wasn't acutely being exposed like Mad Hatter's. I had a chronic exposure. It was over a year later, and I was working with a very bright endocrinologist. And he said to me one day, he said, Dan, you know, I think you have mercury poisoning. I said, I thought so too, man. I did this. He said, that's the wrong test. Do this test, the one I showed you that my wife had. And my mercury was off the chart, like her lead. And I said, what do you think I got it? He said, do you have any dental work done around this time this happened? I said, maybe, because I had this gold put in, et cetera. And by the way, if you have gold, see that gold and silver next to each other? That's the most dangerous thing on the planet right there because it's called galvanism. So it creates a current, an electrical current, and it makes the mercury pour out even faster. If you have a silver filling in, I don't care if it's 30 years old, it's pouring mercury into your brain every day in your gut, disrupting your microbiome. Every day. Drink hot coffee, even worse. Matter of fact, the older the filling, 
Because your dentist say, ah, it's 25 years old, all the mercury's out of it. Baloney. To the contrary, the number of fillings in your mouth is how much you have in your brain. From the womb to the tomb, this is it. Mothers, I, hate, I have bad news. The number of fillings in your mouth is proportional to how many, how much mercury is in your baby's brain. There's the study. The DRASH study shows it. The amount of, uh, the amount of mercury in aborted embryos and deceased infants corresponds to the number of amalgam fillings present in mom's mouth. Look at all these studies. I have more. I have more than that. I have folders full of studies talking about this. Why isn't anybody? If you have mercury in your mouth, or if you had it, it's in you and your children. And men, you're not off the hook because it affects you too. Mercury and obesity, those two studies just right there. And obesity is responsible for all these different diseases. Diabetes and obesity. Heavy metals and diabetes is a link. Do you realize now they're saying 50% of diabetes is actually toxin related? I've been saying it for 15 years. How do we get the diabetics and the thyroid conditions well? We get upstream and remove the chemical subluxation, which nobody's talking about. Diet today does not fix diabetes. When you get upstream to the real problem, that's the key. Autoimmune as well. How many symptoms do you have? I had every one of those symptoms. Even, my wife would argue, abnormal menses. So I can claim all of them. My candida, by the way, never went away. You know how many people, alternative doctors, chase candida and parasites? I never could get rid of it until I went upstream and got rid of the mercury that brings your immune system down because we all have candida. You know how I deal with these severe Lyme cases? I go upstream further than Lyme. It's another pathogen that is opportunistic, and I could go down the list of many. What about flu shots? This is a great study, if you saw it, five, uh, probably not, five consecutive flu shots between this 10-year period, Alzheimer's disease 10 times greater. When they asked Hugh Fuddenberg, one of the leading immunologists in the world, why? He said gradual mercury and aluminum build up in the brain is what they're finding. As soon as we started the brain phase, getting the stuff out of his brain. One was every day he went and took the trash cans up. And every day, she'd bring them down. Because every day in his mind was trash day. Of course, he didn't know the day, but it was Friday. <laughs> she wrote that in the text, in the email. But that day, she, he didn't. And she said, honey, why, you didn't bring the trash cans up. He, wh why would I do that? It, that's Friday. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> she was like, she almost pooped her pants, as she said. <laughs> but that's her words. But, you know, and then he would get up, and he would do this whole thing. I mean, he had all these things already changing. Already changing. Man, am I excited about the work that I do? I am. I am because this is what the world needs. You know how many autistic cases? If you don't tune into my cellular healing TV, that's drpompa.com is my website, drpompa.com. Watch the testimony just recently of the mom with an autistic child who her child's normal now. Watch that. What did I do? I got the chemical subluxation out of the brain. That's what I did. What about vaccines? Are we poisoning an entire generation? I believe we are. I believe we are. And there's multiple problems with that that I don't have time to get into. But this is the third problem. Today, the generation, not they were born into mercury and lead without even being exposed. And now we're all exposed to something called glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in the number one herbicide pesticide on the planet, Roundup. And it is allowing the mercury and the lead to cross deeper into the brain. And according to Stephanie Seneff, one of the senior scientists at MIT, she, in her 2012 paper, showed this, that it's crossing the mercury in the lead in the aluminum into the brain at a deeper level, driving these increases in dementia, Alzheimer's, autism, and she went down the list. Look at that, dementia and glyphosate, is it a coincidence? Google that, Nancy Swanson, there's the source, and look at the conditions that increase with this chemical, but she'll tell you, it's not just the chemical. It's what it's doing to the metals and the mercury and all the things we're already exposed to even from utero. Dementia and autism have all that in common. You can Google it yourself. I'll tell you, you know, this is a growing problem. 
neurotoxicity. I talk about cavitations where you get root canals or you get uh, wisdom teeth out. You realize that 88% of those end up in hidden infection in the mouth and make people very sick and all these hidden infections. People living in moldy homes. I mean, I identify these things and that's how we get very sick people well. And I always am standing there in the doctor's face and they're saying, but this person's not getting well. And you know what my response is? There's something, there's a hidden stressor upstream. It is the chiropractic philosophy. I have trained doctors for many years on these protocols. And I'll tell you, that is still the thing that frustrates me the most, is when people think the answer is the pill instead of the principle of removing interference, the body will stink and heal. I've seen it with every disease that supposedly is unfixable or uncurable. The body can do it. Chemical subluxation, when you match it with physical subluxation, you remove those interferences. Man, you have something the world needs. My doctors, they can charge $10,000, $15,000 a case because they are confident in what they have. I won't let them under charge. One thing I learned in a book called Predictably Irrational by Dan Arley, is it Dan Arley, brilliant guy, is that especially in healthcare, if you don't charge enough, you actually decrease your results. So don't hand me the crap that I want to bring this to the world and give it away. If you're giving it away, according to that MIT study that they did, you're actually weakening the result of the chiropractic adjustment. So I believe if you know that you know that you have what the world needs, then you better put some value on it that delivers the results that it deserves. We have something special. We do. It's the philosophy that I believed. God allowed me to go through what I went through to deliver this message. But it's the chiropractors. I speak in front of many medical doctor groups. And you see them come, the ones that get the philosophy. The other ones, it's like they're scaled. Their eyes have scales or their ears, one or the other. But I believe that God has allowed this group to see this message, to hear this message. One answer that I got was a product called Cytodetox that is able to enter into these membranes, enter into the brain. And it's part of my process, and the booth is out there. It's called Cytodetox. It's a particle that some of them go into the cells and able to cross the blood-brain barrier, and some of them are a little bigger, and they're in a liposome, and they stay out to clean up. It's been a breakthrough in this process. If you can get the stuff out of the brain, chemical subluxation, you're going to change lives. Thank you very much.